We're going to learn some of the basic principles of mathematical demography by means of using matrix models um, to describe a population that's divided into groups by age. For example, let's uh, suppose we want to actually see more groups. So let's suppose we have group one and group two. Uh, these are going to be here considered groups by age or also called age groups and individuals are um, going to transition between such groups okay so they're going to move from one age group into the next so there will be um, a transition transition and this this is the naturally occurring aging process so um, you move from the younger group into the older group you could also uh, or well not you but individuals in this population are going to be assumed to be subject to also natural processes of life or lack of life. So uh, there could be departure from this population due to uh, not surviving or due to natural death by natural causes. Okay. And uh, basically nobody, if individuals survive death or if uh, they do not die then they have to move on to the next age group okay and so there would be uh, you know more more groups uh, denoted with a compartment like that um, the first group here um, this is simply called age group one that first group may have an incoming arrow um, and this would be the offspring or the so-called births Okay, so the birds will go into the first age group and then there will be contributions. You will see uh, the expressions in a minute. There will be contributions uh, from all groups into, it will be like expressed mathematically as a linear combination. So we uh, have a few assumptions here. First, we're going to consider a number of age groups that is discrete, um, which is part of the beauty of using matrices for this type of thing. Um, the variable that's storing the numbers of individuals in each group is what we call a uh, state variable. And here um, it's going to be stored in um, a variable we call x. So the jth group, the size of the jth group, will be stored in x of j. And every, um, every entry of the state variable is a function of time. Here time is denoted, the time step is denoted uh, with the letter n. So not only there is a discrete number of age groups, there is also what we're considering here are discrete time steps. Okay, so let's see what we have. Uh, the next assumption in building this is that the length of time spent in each uh, age group is the same, and um, there is equal. Uh, this this length of time is equal to the interval between measurements of population size. So here's where the notation, you may think it's uh, a little complicated, but uh, so at step n plus one, the number of individuals in the jth uh, group is equal to those that were in the previous group, the previous time step. So if we're looking at the time step n plus one and the group j, we need to keep in mind that the recent past, okay, so those that were in the previous age group, uh, the previous time step, are there is at least a fraction of those. Uh, so this is what we're writing here, that the number of individuals in the jth group at uh, the n plus one time step is gonna be equal to those that were in j plus j minus one in the nth time step, okay, uh, minus the number of members of the age group uh, Basically, this is saying that we have to take into account those that survive and those that pass away due to natural causes. So the survival is going to be denoted here with probabilities of um, that here denoting p sub k or p sub i. So each of these quantities, p sub 1, p sub 2, uh, all the way through p sub m, uh, denotes the survival from one age group to the next um, and some um, 
something to note here is that that survival uh, is a function of age. So there are certain age groups that are more prone to, sur to survive and there are other age groups. In other words, that some age groups may be more exposed uh, to dying due to natural causes and some other ones are less exposed. So there is a differentiability according to the age group in terms of survival. So with the exception of the first, uh, here we write x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, all the way through x sub m, we write expressions uh, that are in the spirit of saying, uh, well, if we are in the time step n plus 1 in this group, uh, say, for example, let's talk about the very first one that we have here. So we have uh, the number of individuals on in group 2 at uh, n plus 1. This is going to be the fraction p sub 1 of those individuals that were in the previous group, which was xn at the previous time step uh, n. Okay, so uh, basically this product p sub one times x sub one, this is the, this would be the new, um, the new x sub two. The, those that go into the group, uh, into the following group are just a fraction of the, sur the surviving fraction of the previous group. So the fecundity, uh, also sometimes referred as fertility, um, is what we use to argue what happens uh, to the number of individuals in the first group. And we're going to say the recruitment. Um, rec recruitment here, broadly speaking, is like production or uh, yeah, the production of offspring, the recru recruitment of new, in of new members into the population is assumed to come from a birth process with fecundity depending only on age. This again would mean that uh, that fecundity or fertility or ability to reproduce is also depending on the age group. There are groups, age groups that are too young uh, to be productive in this regard and there are other ones that are too old uh, and so there are some groups that are going to have uh, you know an expected, an expected production uh, significantly larger, right? So uh, in very broad term, you would think that those that are very, very young would produce nothing, and those that are very, very old also would produce nothing in terms of offspring. Um, and so it's really depending on some age groups in the middle of the, of the total timeline or life cycle. But uh, mathematically speaking, we can denote uh, those contributions as a linear combination. And so these uh, parameters here, the parameters that we're writing with uh, betas, these betas probably inspired by the uh, birth uh, uh, birth process. So beta sub k or beta sub j, these parameters are non-negative real numbers. And then uh, we write a linear combination of those sizes at time n in each group. And that would be how we express uh, the number of individuals on in group one, which is receiving. Uh, I, I had expressed before that the first group uh, would have an incoming error. Well, that incoming error is basically, is, is exactly this linear combination. So this would be something that looks like uh, summation beta sub j x sub j at time n. That's precisely what comes into this input putting all the equations or writing all the equations together, uh, we obtain this, which in uh, matrix vector form, um, something that we would uh, express as the vector x at n plus one is that matrix A times the vector x at time n. So this is a good, um, this is a good time to make an observation. You um, can write a computer program uh, to do this matrix vector multiplication. According to this, you could also uh, argue that the exact solution is in fact uh, a matrix multiplied by itself n times when n denotes a time step and that multiplied by the initial conditions. So you could write a computer program that uh, actually computes the power of the matrix at the nth power or the multiplies a matrix times a vector 
several times. Either way, you will be able to compute this vector, uh, this state variable vector that has the numbers that are the sizes, the population sizes of each age group. So for example, uh, let's say that we're using the computer and I had to retype um, what the matrix was. And so this, this, uh, this uh, some of the values of the matrix, and let's say that I compute uh, that matrix vector update. So let's suppose that I have uh, computed the matrix vector update and that I have that store. For some reason, I decided to call that X groups. Okay, and so when I compute the matrix multiplying the vector several times, um, then this uh, X groups variable gets populated. Okay, and when I display what are the values store there, then it kind of looks like this. So uh, you can call it whatever you want, but I am just gonna um, use here, so this command, uh, dim for dimension, okay? And so dim dimension of X groups, and this is telling me that um, there are five, uh, so the output of this is five and 50. So that means that there are five rows and 50 columns. Okay, so um, so that means that <clears throat> the output here of the simulation of one of these matrix uh, models for age structure, that output is a rectangular matrix um, and it has a lot of columns. So I could, uh, that explains why when we simply display the matrix here, um, you know, it's it has a lot of output like that. So, if uh, if I wanted, I could display this output uh, using the transpose. So this little T here stands for transpose of X groups, and now the output of uh, the output of this matrix vector update is something that looks like this. And so what we can uh, it looks a little better. So this also depends on how I generated this simulated output of this matrix model. Uh, if I modify the way in which things are stored on that variable X groups, then I wouldn't have to use the transpose. But, um, you know, I'm just pointing this to your attention because uh, what you can see when you display the output in this way, you can see here on the first row um, that those are the values of population size in the first time step. So here it was assumed that there was one individual in each of these five groups. And then if you uh, take a closer look at the first column, right? So this goes from one to basically 25 and 18 and 22 and, you know, so as this keeps iterating, so you can see that the first group um, keeps a fair number of individuals here and 50, there are 50 rows displayed like this, which means there are 50 time steps uh, that were simulated. And at the very end, okay, is what we display here, the sizes on each group. You can see the group one and group two and group three to some extent are the ones that have a lot of individuals. I would say that certainly there seems, a, uh, there seems to be a lot of individuals in the first group with order 200. And you can see that uh, almost an order of magnitude smaller um, that are 22 individuals in the second group there's only three um, in group number three and then the last two groups are very very scarce or sparsely populated okay so this is one way of reading uh, the the output of this and so an important thing is well how many individuals that are according to these numbers at any given time if i wanted to take at the very last time i would have to add up these sizes so I could be more precise and I could actually use the very last um, entry of this matrix. But if I just did it by hand, kind of rounding, you know, I say 242 for the first, uh, 22, this really should be 23 for the second group. And then I'm gonna say three for the next and one and one, even though that's not exactly like rounding, but this gives us an idea of 270. So the first group has um, dividing the size by the total, the first group has nearly 90%. The second uh, group has um, 
nearly eight, uh, eight or nine percent. So there is ninety percent of the individuals in in the very last time step here. Ninety percent of those individuals uh, are located in group H, H group one, and nearly nine percent are placed in the H group number two, right? And so then I could do the same for uh, the next number, say three out of two seventy, and uh, these numbers are even smaller, right? So, so you get the idea. So these these numbers that are now numbers between zero and one, those are the fractions. And those, if we were going to compute the um, stable H distribution, which comes from eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we can uh, confirm indeed that uh, the values obtained uh, from the calculation. Uh, that's called the stable H distribution, which is something that follows from the eigenvector, eigenvector associated with the dominant eigenvalue. Uh, so you can compare this value here, 8986, excuse me, 0 0.8986, 0 0.852. You can compare those values to what we had computed before, which are fractions based on um, the total size at a given time step, right? So uh, this value of 0 0.90, 0 0.8960 something came from dividing the size over the total. And so when you take a look at the fractions versus time, uh, that would tell you in some cases that converges very smoothly uh, into the values that are predicted by the so-called stable age distribution. 